gentlemen, I have subjected myself to torment, to hell, to punishment, to nightmares, to evil, to Diablo himself. And it is finally time for me to watch the video of Diablo Immortal. Gentlemen, let us begin. In this video, I'm going to show you a great game built on a terrible foundation. I'll show you how you can spend 20 pounds- That's not true, it's a shit game. ...to condense six months worth of free-to-play farming into three seed. minutes, and With how even if you tree. do buy the 30-day item pack, you might not actually get the 30-day item uh -huh. pack. I'll show you the secret mathematical and psychological tricks the game uses to we get you to those. spend money, including Ooh. abusive pricing structures, multiple layers of RNG, and the 22 different in-game currencies. I'll explain Wait, how Diablo what? Immortal has got around the legal definition of loot box by adding in a single gameplay step, despite being functionally the same process. I'll explain and how Diablo Immortal whoa, 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 is essentially up, a gacha game and has hidden whale mechanics you can't even find. I'll explain how Diablo Immortal has got around the legal definition of loot box by adding in a single gameplay step despite being functionally the same process. I'll explain. Oh, right, yeah, because like you have to run a rift. Yeah, of course. How Diablo Immortal is essentially a gacha game and has hidden whale mechanics you can't even find until you've invested enough money that they are sure they've got you. And then I'll lament over how if Wait, you what? removed all of this, it's actually a very good game. Let's start with the basics. Video game I will disagree on that. I think Diablo Immortal at its very core, it's a shit seed that grew into a shit sapling that becomes a shit tree and it drops shit fruit. It's all shit. So and critique, yeah, especially on the internet, can be a difficult thing to balance. Fans of any game want you to praise it and can become angered when you point out flaws. Yeah, they and people always who do. dislike the game love it when you point out flaws and hate it when you praise it. This yeah. is because video game communities contain very passionate very people both for and against any game or company, and both extreme sides are often reading reviews or watching videos looking for confirmation bias, not actual critique. Of Most people want to be told what they already strongly believe is correct. That's the true. for and against Diablo Immortal camps have already sprung up, with some people focusing focusing on the absurd cash shop and others saying, you don't need to pay, it's a free game, just don't spend any money. That's true. The cash shop critics point out the blatant pay for advantage systems and daily login rewards encouraging addictive gameplay patterns, along with the loot box style gameplay so egregious it's already been preemptively banned in two countries for falling foul of the EU gambling laws, yep. and the game supporters reply with a well rehearsed, well I'm having fun, it hasn't affected me. I'll be dis Which is true, I think that there are some people, and, and this is the reality reality of a lot of these games is that a lot of these games come out and they actually are fun for a ton of people that's why what, what rating is it right now for those of you guys that are dumb enough to buy an iphone uh what's the rating on it on the apple play store right now i'm kind of curious yeah I, i'll check right now it's a it's a 0 0.5 i'll check on the uh, on the play store okay and diablo immortal it's rated 3.7. It's a 4.5. It's, it's at least 4.5. That's really good, man. There's a lot of people that just play the game and they don't give a fuck. Discussing the damage Josh this general is attitude wrong. is doing to the gaming industry as a whole later. The truth is Diablo Immortal yeah. is an excellent gameplay experience with solid moment-to-moment -moment combat and super enjoyable hack and slash multiplayer moments absolutely overshadowed by a foundation level insidious monetization system designed to make every aspect of the game funnel the player towards spending an absolutely unacceptable amount of money. Oh, but this goes deeper I than just that. one game. So in this video I'll not only deeply critique Diablo Immortal but also the behaviors of an industry and how we as players can set the boundaries for what we will and will not accept in relation to monetization. I'll show you the- I, I, I firmly believe that players cannot and will not set any boundaries. Like, I, I, I firmly believe this. I, I, I don't think that players will ever do that because I think Diablo Immortal is a great example. There are so many people that are completely outside of your reach of communication they're just going to play the game and not give a fuck. And that's that's who they count on. Deep psychological and mathematical tricks games companies are using to turn video games from products you People put say like, oh, but streamers were, were using it as a source of content. Oh, really? Well, what about Raid Shadow Legends? What about like the other hundred fucking gotcha games that nobody plays on Twitch, but still bring in revenue in the millions per month? Clearly, 
streaming the game does not make it successful because most of these games are not popular on Twitch or really on YouTube, but they're massively fucking successful. So if streaming it was the reason why, then it would change it. It's common sense. Just and enjoy because they're designed to it's be fun audience. into processes. Go. They want you to become stuck within and then keep paying for the because they're designed Joes. to be inviting and then we addictive. Hate I'll Joes. also be contrasting the design decisions within Diablo Immortal to Blizzard's own code of conduct and ethics on their own website. Well, we and all know how much Blizzard cares about their own ethics. We'll see if Diablo Immortal as a game lives up to Blizzard's own self-imposed standards. Grab a drink, because this is quite a long video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife-Hayes, and today we're going to look at the diabolically immoral Diablo Immortal. A big thank you to all the supporters on Patreon oh and God. Twitch who allow me to remain independent and make videos like this. I'll be Here looking at the general gameplay, plot, and combat, then into the absolute plethora of monetization tricks the game uses, including gentle onboarding, limited time offers causing fear of missing out, yeah, abusive pricing structures, multiple steps of conversion, multiple stacking monthly subs, cumulative login days being required for paid-for rewards, multiple progression tracks, and here. just straight up yep. locking the main aspects Diablo is known for, dopamine spiking loot fountains uh -huh. shooting out of a boss, behind a paywall. Now Diablo as a franchise is no stranger to monetization controversy. When Diablo 3 released it had an actual money in-game marketplace. Yeah. Players could sell their drops or buy drops from other players for actual cash. This was removed relatively quickly after extreme community backlash. As players pointed out, it was against the spirit of Diablo. The end game gameplay of Diablo revolves around repeatedly killing high intensity bosses. As I the feel like, I've said before, I think that the reason it got removed is because it was a secondary marketplace and it got regulated by the FTC or something. Yeah, it, it opened up Blizzard to liability. I, I think that there were, I mean, you very clearly can say that there were a lot of people that didn't like the real money auction house but i don't think that it was as universally disliked as people might remember because there were tons of people that wanted to be able to farm gold and sell it and make money too and people thought that was cool at the same time increase in difficulty for the chance of a rare drop. If you could just buy the rare drop, you'd be defeating the main gameplay loop and removing the sense of pride and accomplishment which comes with having those rare drops. Well, now you Diablo 3 released on PC and console in May of 2012, Oof. and six years later, in 2018 at BlizzCon, players were excited to hear news about Diablo 4. Oh, yeah. But what they got was Diablo Immortal, That's right. a mobile game. And that Don't you gave guys us have this phones? absolute classic moment in gaming oh, history. Here we go. Are there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any? Uh, yeah, this, this the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Come on, say it. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you oh, guys don't have God, I think it's important there it to is. Yeah, I love it, boo. Well, they changed that, though. And I responded. I remember, uh, yeah, they were like, oh, we're going to make it on PC. Thank God for that. I think that was a good decision for them to do. Realize BlizzCon is attended by Blizzard's biggest fans, mostly yeah. PC gamers. Warcraft, Absolutely. World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch have massive PC player bases, yeah. so very few of these people were actively excited about a mobile game. No, the people in that room that wanted a game which would push their hardcore gaming PCs to the max and exactly. not be full of traditional mobile microtransactions and time gating mechanics. In June of 2022, Diablo Immortal released on mobile and went into open beta on PC. The PC version is a port of the mobile game and still features such lines as tap to play. The game does They did not put in any effort to make the PC port a PC port. At no point in time whenever you use the PC port of Diablo Immortal do you ever have the luxury of forgetting that it's a phone game. Across you will platform never forget play, that. so mobile and PC players can adventure together, provided they're on the same server, because it does not have cross-server play. So this I downloaded- fucking stupid. 
with the game on PC and gave it a go. The first warning cry mm -hmm. from everyone said, the game can track your face through your phone app or your webcam. Yep. Now, this rumor began when the installation files were opened up and people found face detector and face analyzer .dll. Some people said the game has face tracking capabilities because it's required for release in China to conform to the strict gaming laws. Yeah, now that However, had that. the lead dev Adam Fletcher explains they're actually leftover files from an early idea in Diablo Immortals development. Originally, the game would let you recreate your own facial expression on your character by using your own camera. This idea has been abandoned because it was terrible. The intro movie. I think that they should just get rid of that part of the code. Like, why is it even there then? Like, obviously, like, they could say, like, yeah, oh, we forgot to get rid of that. We'll get rid of it. Right? I mean, like, why not just get rid of it at that point? You know what I mean? Base Tyrael talks about the world stone, some great you know evil, why? and then we get this absolute banger of a line. If humanity is to survive, they must stand together and face the rising darkness. This was really cool. I find it beautifully ironic that Diablo Immortal opens with a call for players to rally together against a rising evil and the main thing it's inspired people to do is come together against its atrocious pricing model. Yeah, what a the game meta itself. way to succeed. Get told to tap the screen because porting mobile games to PC is hard and then yeah. choose a class. Six classes, I'm going with my edgy boy, the Demon Hunter. The customization is actually really nice. We move some sliders. I agree with Unfortunately, that. these do not matter at all because you'll never look at your own face or any other character's face. I Whether agree with on that. A boat to worth them the game is fully voiced and it's not terribly acted i agree with that i actually i think this is probably the high point of the game uh i think the campaign as i said before the campaign reminded me a lot of a um it's like one of those 90s uh comedy movies that were really funny and then they decide like you know because it's 2018 and so like they're running out of ideas and so they just make uh that funny comedy movie too with, like, a lot of the same actors who are now, like, fucking old and wrinkly and shit. And the movie's terrible. And, like, half of the jokes in the movie are references to the original movie. That's what Diablo Immortals campaign reminded me of. It was, like, a lot of... Yeah, Zoolander 2. That's the... That's really what I'm thinking of. Gone to hell, you say? I'm in the right place, then. Aye. Follow the road and be on your guard. Unfortunate things happen to travelers in that forest. Not Movement bad. is WASD or left click. Primary attacking is also left click, but yep. you'll only attack when your cursor is over an enemy. This can mean clicking to move, especially in a crowd of enemies, is a bad idea because you'll end up attacking instead of moving. Oh. It also means you'll yeah. frequently lose your cursor in the chaos of battle and end up randomly running around or attacking off to the side I've somewhere while you try and find it again. Oh, it also means two. once wow. you've killed whatever it was you were attacking, if you continue holding down left click, you'll start running toward that location. Your other skills are bound to the two, three, and four keys. We'll look at combat later because honestly it's great. If you've never played a Diablo game, here's a basic rundown. Demons exist and you'd really rather they didn't. You can realize yep. your dream of a demon free world through the power of friendship and incredible violence. Eventually angels get involved but the power of heaven is nothing compared to the power of one angry man with an axe or a moody guy with some crossbows. One thing I do have to praise the game for is capturing the feeling of Diablo while being made in a completely different engine. Diablo 3 was created in a customized version of the Havoc engine while Diablo Immortal is made in NetEase's own Messiah engine. They've managed to capture the feeling of movement, skill use, and attack impact spot on. Kill enemies and I pick up loot. So. Annoying, you can't click on an item's nameplate. You have to click I on mean, they've captured a lot of things from Diablo 3, such as the entire game. The item itself. Your inventory is the classic Diablo yeah. style of a square grid a with job. larger items taking up multiple grid slots. As you fight on, enemies will drop red health orbs or blue mana orbs, sometimes power up orbs like increased speed or lightning damage. Along See, you can tell that this isn't a whale group because if it was a whale group, all those mobs would be instantly dead. With this, you have three health potions which recharge when you kill yep. enemies. This game design lends itself to fast, aggressive combat encountered because you are rewarded for being aggressive, so the energy is always high. We make our way to the town of Wortham, get followed through a portal by some demon, and told... Trust me, mate, once I explain the monetization, you definitely will. We head into the chapel Absolutely. and meet our old friend Deckard Cain, so we decide to stay a while and listen. Of course. My name is Deckard Cain. 
I'm a bit of a traveling scholar, one might say. Basically, hell's coming back, and we're going to prevent it with the power of crossbows. I would have never guessed that. Find some to the west and discover sometimes the left mouse button gets stuck down, even if you're not clicking, making your character follow the cursor. And other times, oh, it yeah. just doesn't register. That happens Possibly on campaigns. Lag. But or honestly, on in two days of near constant play, I didn't experience that many connection issues. Kill yeah, a dragon fun. thing and find a shard of the world stone. Magical MacGuffins hell really wants and we need to destroy. Think of them like demonic batteries, and like regular batteries, you shouldn't throw them in the regular bin. So we're on a quest really? to find a responsible way to dispose of them. Kane tells us the demon we're fighting is called Skarn. This means we're now at threat level midnight, so we set off to destroy more of the shards of the Worldstone before Hell can plug them into more demons. Quick intro video explains the map, and we're sent off to help someone with something, and the game asks, hey, you want to spend 89p for there some orbs and a weapon skin? Yep. I'm going to keep we track of there. every time the game gives me the opportunity to spend money. This is the first. And I'm going to do a deep dive into the currencies and the systems they relate to later on. So the first time that you t that they try to finesse you out of money, you're at level 6. Holy shit. 800% value? Yeah, you'd be stupid not to buy it. In this video. Once you have a few quests, you'll get the quest list on the left. <laughs> Click on a quest to select it, and you'll see a sparkling footstep path leading you to it. If you're far enough into an area, you'll unlock auto navigation within that area. Using auto navigate will either run or automatically teleport you to the nearest teleport point and then I run like the that rest because of the I'm lazy. I also discover the first kill of the day award. So let's rip this band aid off right now. Diablo Immortal is a mobile game and is designed really? to build habits, to create attachment, and to encourage daily replay. Sure you have is. an oppressive number of tracked systems, login rewards, first kill awards, advancement paths, some free, some paid, some upgradable. You have achievements most and free. advancements through or every sorry, single zone and rewards for killing enough monsters and doing enough dungeons. And each of these systems is tracked on a different screen with a different UI and it's made this way by design. You're yeah. not meant to be able to remember everything you have to do, so the game can give you these little red gem icons to the top right of buttons to remind you you have something to collect, and you'll often find yourself spending more time in endless menus collecting rewards than you will in an actual rift. We chase down some mage- I think that's probably true. You do spend, like, yeah, a lot of times whenever I was playing, I was, like, actually just trying to be able to play the game, and I hardly even had the opportunity to do that because I was just- I had to click through this red menu and the next one and then, oh, I have to level up my battle pass and then, oh, there's another menu. Well, I have to talk to this guy for my gems. I have to level up the other gems so I can put it in the gem. Uh, yo, dog, like, holy fuck. We watch her throw a dude off a bridge and then meet this guard who says this. Oh, what a day. Certainly didn't expect to get choked by some death mage when I left the stead this morning. None of us wake up expecting to be choked by a death mage, but sometimes you just get lucky and it happens. Yeah. To interact with another player, hold Alt and left click on them. You can send messages, friend requests, and party invitations. You can but also you inspect cannot directly them. trade player to player because trading is done via the auction house. Wait, what? You can't trade in the game? I never even tried to trade, so I didn't even know this. You cannot trade items in the game. Oh my god requires the premium currency of platinum to do. Quick oh PC issue. This is the salvage menu where you turn your unwanted equipment into scrap. The mouse wheel does not move this window. You have you to need hold to and click drag. And yeah. drag. If you're going like to release phone. on PC, please let us use the scroll wheel. Also consider using right Imagine click that. because as it stands, right click does absolutely nothing. A free daily reward pack accessed via the shop menu. This is a psychological value. Trick. If you're going to give the player something for free, make sure to claim it. They have to access a place where they there is paid stuff because then they it's will see right, the paid bro. stuff. Every it's like access a place. Oh, what's this? Uh, should I get this? I mean, this is a beginner's pack, eight hundred percent value. I mean, ooh, I don't know. Ooh, it's right there. Ooh, it's right there. I might accidentally click it. It's crazy. You lose the money even now. Yeah, you lose the money by not buying it. Exactly, man. Where there is paid stuff because then they will see the paid stuff every day. And if they're returning to this screen for their free daily pack, it's only a matter of time until someone gets tempted to spend money. You're not putting this free pack here because it makes logistical yep. sense. You're putting it here because it's tempting. Lost Ark does the same thing. It's like you get the player, what the goal is, is you want to get them, you want to build a habit of going to the store. You want them to, oh, it's a new day. Let me check the store. You're always getting them to check the store all the time. 
can get a free cosmetic set sent to me in the mail. That's Everyone gets the goal. This. It's to celebrate 30 million pre-registrations. Mm -hmm. 30 million pre-registrations. If you ever wonder why mobile games are so pushed, it's because the horrible truth is the mobile gaming market is bigger than the PC and console gaming Put market together. combined. As you Look progress through graph. the main story, you'll Wait unlock bounties. Wait a second. Look at this graph. 52%. I showed y'all this before, so you know about this. 21, 52% of 20, 2021's global game revenues came from mobile, making it the largest gaming segment by far. That's the world that we live in now, guys, okay? Like, you thought you were the gamers? Uh-uh. It's the soccer moms now. They're the ones that are running the show. Console gaming market combined. As you progress through the main story, you'll unlock bounties, an open world hunting system. Hunt down certain enemies and yep. get increased rewards for killing them. You can claim eight bounties a day from the bounty board. My current bounty target is Philip, so the plan is grab mum, kill Phil, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. I'm picking up new equipment every few minutes, and on the it's such a good fucking movie, man. It's actually such a good fucking movie. Oh my god inventory screen there's a handy dandy green arrow showing you if a new piece is better than yeah, an old piece death. many people will tell you that diablo begins at 60 because until then you'll be finding upgrades so quickly That's you won't even read the me. name or look at the stats of any individual bit you'll uh -huh. just do as the green arrow commands but if you're a free player i would argue the real game begins around level 35 when the leveling suddenly slows to a crawl but we'll see more of that later i unlock the extremely awesome grapple skill letting me blast around the battlefield like a more violent spider-man and global chat has descended into an an argument about pay to win versus free to play so while i'm madly dude that's my favorite thing it's like there's people in the general chat that are like oh how it gonna be pay to win i play the game and i like it and i only paid 35 dollars that ain't nothing i didn't pay to win it's like i'm putting in thousands of bucks that's what it is. Thing around, let me make my stance on this game rather clear. Okay. No one has said they expect this game to be 100% free. No one expects any video game to have no way to make money whatsoever. Of course. Indeed, if it well, was there a one-time paid that. game with a cosmetic-only cash shop, I'd be recommending this to everyone. Yeah. No one has an issue with Diablo Immortal attempting to make money. We know that development time and server hosting costs money. The right. issue I have is the way it is making it and the position it is putting players into if they don't pay. The game is not a product because a product is usually released finished and then sold usually. for the cost the company think it is worth. If that cost is fair, people will pay it and then that process is complete. Diablo Immortal is a process itself of downloading, playing and advancing and it wants players to stay within that process as long as possible because unlike a product which is sold once, a process can contain many moments it encourages the player to pay. Yeah. And each individual payment may only be small but it's they're like very you're quickly getting them multiple times. to greater than the cost of a one-time purchase. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you get somebody to spend a one dollar a hundred times. That's better than if you get them to spend fifty bucks once. I mean, shit. It's easy to understand. I talk about the payment issues. People yeah. respond with a well-rehearsed retort of, "Well, I'm having fun." And I think it's vital if you do respond with, "Well, I'm having fun." Good. We are all glad. No one wants you to stop having fun. What we want is the company to treat you better. If yeah. your attitude is, I don't care about the money, I'm just focusing on the game, then please understand we're actually advocating for the company to have the same attitude as you. Focus on making the game as fun as it can be and people will buy it because it's fun. No that's, a, that's a really good point. I feel like more people should talk about that is the fact that like a lot of the people that have problems with like uh, practices like this, they have problems with it and, like, they're advocating for the player. It's almost like these people feel like they have to defend the game. Like, oh, I have to defend the game. I have to make sure that the game is, uh, is okay. Uh, I'm defending Blizzard. Like, no, bro, like, we're trying to help you. Not because you've designed it to be as close to fun as possible so it keeps players around, but not too much fun that they can enjoy it completely without paying. Of course Blizzard's not. first What We Stand For is Gameplay First, which literally says to make our games as fun. Well, that's true. You do play the game first, and then five seconds after that, then you go to the store as possible. True. We're not saying Diablo Immortal shouldn't be monetized. 
We're Nobody's saying it saying shouldn't that. be abusively monetized. We push on and go and kill the Auric. See, like, I don't really give a fuck if, if it's abusively monetized. I just care if it has loot boxes. Take loot boxes out of the game, and you will immediately see everybody quitting. Because the only reason why these games, these pay-to-win shit fests, are successful is because it convinces dipshits into thinking that they could be the one that wins. And the moment that you take that out of it, it's gone. If somebody goes to the store and they see you need to, you buy this for 50 bucks and you need 50 of them in order to make an item, they can easily do the math and think to themselves, this is a waste of my fucking time. But if you put it in a little special box and sometimes it doesn't drop and it's only $5, then somehow people convince themselves that it's different. That's what it is. It's not a real Diablo game until you've killed Leoric. During this part, I it unlock the Battle way. Pass and the Boon of Plenty in the shop. Oh, and when I finish that? the Leoric dungeon, I I'm presented that. with the exciting opportunity to spend more money to buy the Mad King's Breach Bundle. Ooh, a one-time reward specific to this dungeon. Big Your money. reward for finishing a buy dungeon that. is the opportunity to, to spend, spend money. money. Yes. This happens in every dungeon. And you'll notice the costs of the pack slowly increase. Because it's only 18. Not only do they increase, but the the bonus percentage, like now you're only getting 390 percent. Well, over here you only get 2600, 260 percent. This is only 240 percent. Guys, it's going down, and the val the value is going down. The prices are going up, but you're still playing the game. You're still addicted. You can't stop now. You're gonna get to 60 when you finish oh one dungeon, God. that's fine. But once you've spent 89p, you're invested. Which means they can make things Literally. more and more expensive until yes. they stop giving you any real discount for buying the dungeon packs. But you're still doing it because by then, not buying it would be wasting the money you've previously spent. Exactly, This yeah. is effectively the sunk cost fallacy. It'd be stupid Twitter not user to Mr. GM made this mock-up of a picture. Oh, Just God. imagine if... Finishing a dungeon for the first time in World of Warcraft rewarded- The best part about this was whenever this happened, there were people in the... my chat that were like, Well, actually, I mean, I, I, I don't really like doing Mythic Plus, so like, if they want to do this, I mean, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, look, I mean, it's not too bad. I, I yeah, it's not too bad. I, yeah, like, and, and really- there are some people that were like, this sounds good to me. The opportunity to spend like money to unlock extra rewards. I'm going to come back to this later and fully explain the Battle Pass and Boon of like Plenty because when you read the fine game. print, it is even worse than it seems. The demon mm -hmm. effect under the glass floor, however, That's is really awesome. Cool. And the boss fight itself yeah. is great. More story. We kill that. I thought the boss fight was garbage. I think all of the boss fights are fucking garbage. Fess, but not really. Who's Lethes, you ask? No one cares. Doesn't matter. Cares. The story yeah. in a Diablo game is background She's music. really hot. They should have made us... Many times you'll be introduced to a character, more. go on a quest with them, then watch them die in a heart-wrenching hero's death. They'll oh, yeah, sacrifice themselves for a greater I cause. And you're expected to care. And I'm thinking, mate, I've known you ten minutes. The only reason I remember your name is because it's above your head while you're dying. We now unlock legendary gem crafting. <laughs> and this is the system we'll be pouring okay. most of our wallet into Here later. We, go. we now learn about sockets, gems, elder rifts, and crests. So this is probably the time to talk about the game's main system, the Elder Rifts, and how they're going to cost you an incredible amount of money to do efficiently. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you complete one rift every five minutes and want the best loot from them, you'll yeah. be spending around £240 an hour to grind this game. Oh, Le that's actually not that bad. I thought it was going to be more. Oh, it's pounds. Never mind. So it's like $6,000 in the United States dollars. Never mind. I think like realistically it's like 500 bucks me break that down for you while diablo immortal does this 300 dude i thought pound was like two to one it, it's 300 oh shit okay i didn't know i thought i thought it was like two to one no I, yeah it used to be yeah I, I i'm not up to up to date a main campaign storyline and indeed you are required Thanks, to finish Brexit. this to unlock the hell plus difficulty in rifts the majority mm -hmm. of your gameplay both grinding and post story will be in an elder rift an elder rift is a procedurally generated dungeon you can enter solo or in a team of up to the procedure that they use to generate the dungeon is control c control v Four. There is a party finding mechanic, but remember, it's cross-platform play, not cross-server. As yeah. we discovered when Callum Upton, a fellow like, YouTuber so and a friend of mine, made a character. 
Currently, there is no way to transfer your character from one server to another. You just need to restart. While in a rift, you'll see a timer to the left. The little hourglass symbol moves along the bar from left to right. As you kill enemies, the bar itself fills up. When the bar is full, the boss will spawn. Kill wow. the boss before the timer runs out. Get the loot, leave and repeat. This is the absolute core of the PvE Diablo experience. Grind enemies for better equipment to grind enemies better. But before you start a rift... You have to keep in mind, you're getting the same equipments with different stats, and you're fighting the same enemies with bigger numbers. There's no transformation here. There's never a point where you go from point A to point B. No, it's just you just do the same thing over and over and over again. You can choose to add in crests, either normal or legendary. Adding crests increases the chance higher rarity loot will drop from the boss kill. You can mm -hmm. see the potential loot increase as you add crests. Now, of seeing course. as the crest screen shows three empty slots on the right-hand side and shows zero out of three, you'd assume that each player can add up to three crests. Well, no, they can add way more, but it's hidden, and we'll come to that later. I, I like how you... Whenever you get the opportunity after three, it's like, so you want to do one, two, three? All right, bro, we know you're a whale. Let's do, let's do seven more. Come on, man. You don't want to waste your time, do you? Diablo Immortal is personal. No other player can steal your rare or legendary loot. Now, yeah. adding in legendary crests as a player always guarantees you a legendary item, but it does also give a slight boost to the other players in your party and increases their chance to receive runestones or fading Ooh, embers, both intermediate upgrade currencies. This has led to the rather toxic situation of parties kicking players who aren't using crests because they... Well, why wouldn't they, right? I mean, like, if you can't afford to run $20 rifts, I mean, it looks like you just can't afford to play the game feel those so is this actually true like i mean i don't really like I, I quit this game so like i don't even know but but is this true like you actually get kicked out if you're not spending real money in the game fuck yes that is so awesome i love it wow the shamelessness of that is just absolutely fucking disgusting holy shit i've been kicked before wow non-cresting players are not paying their way. Using crests always benefits Imagine you and being sometimes a no helps the man. party. You cannot Jesus. lose your drop potential to what another a player. But to truly understand the absolute insidious nature of how powerful these legendary crests are and why they are considered pay to win and <laughs> no how cresters. much money you can end up spending on them, we need to understand how the other currency systems work because That's gonna be crests hard to do. feed into almost everything else. So we need to take a look mm -hmm. at the very foundation of the monetization system for context. Now, the game itself is a tangled web of interwoven systems which all relate to each other, and it's designed that way to hide the actual monetary cost of any single system. Because of this... Well, that's right. So you buy... Yeah, you buy... You, you buy tokens, you put them in the Blizzard store, and then you buy Eternal Orbs. And then you buy... With Eternal Orbs, you buy Platinum. And then with Platinum, you buy uh, the items that you want. So, like, whenever you buy the item that you want, it's like, well, actually, how much is this again? I forgot. And that's what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah, it, it, it's supposed to obfuscate the amount of money that you spend. Spider web design, it's very difficult to find a starting point. So hold on, because this might get complicated while I break it I down. I bet it will. I have so far experienced in Diablo Immortal 22 different currencies and raw materials used to feed into various shops and upgrade systems. They are... Gold, dropped from enemies, used in upgrading equipment. Eternal orbs, premium buyable currency, used for buying things in the shop. Platinum, used in the market board for posting and buying items player mm -hmm. to player, bought with eternal orbs. Right. Battle points, used to progress the battle pass and earn the battle pass rewards, earned oh. by completing rifts, dungeons, yeah, or yeah, bought yeah. directly with eternal orbs. Here we go. Scrap materials, used to upgrade items, earned from salvaging unneeded equipment at the blacksmith. Right, that's Hilts, easy. spend at the hilt merchant on limited oh. monthly or weekly stock, earned by progressing the battle pass. Normal gems, combined to upgrade non-legendary gems, bought from the hilt merchant, found in rifts when using house. normal crests, and made by combining runes at the apprentice. Jewelers. Yes. Runes dropped in rifts when you are using crests or someone in your party is using a legendary crest. I oh, have... so that's why you don't want to have any no crest leechers in your group because you're not going to get runes. So if you're not giving Blizzard money, you're effectively stealing from your friends. 
So far found 21 different runes. Garnet, Sapphire and Beryl. Three gems which all combine to upgrade the Legacy of the Haradrim. A <laughs> system good. which you unlock once you're level 49 and have completed 10 challenge rifts. I've done Crests that. improve rift drops slightly. You get one free a day bought from the Hilt Merchant. Only sometimes one. earned on the Battle Pass. Only one. Legendary crests improve rift drops by a lot and guarantee a legendary. Bought from they the can. cash shop for orbs or a found in the premium shop dungeon chest unlocked after you finish that dungeon. You can also buy one a month from the hilt merchant using in-game currency one a month two on the battle pass the sigil of dog imagine that you have to wait once a month to get one of the basic legendary crests that you can buy once a fucking month man meanwhile you've got fucking whales dropping down 10 of them every five minutes Dominance advances your immortal standing, a higher level endgame faction. Enchanted Dust, an upgrade mm -hmm. material used on higher level item upgrades found by salvaging rare equipment. Reinforcing Stones, re-rolling attributes on equipment bought in the cash shop. Aspirant's Keys, oh. unlock rare chests in dungeons earnable on the battle pass. Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't buy any reforged stones. I didn't even know I could do that. Holy shit, I forgot all about that. Scoria, found when fighting Heliquary oh, demons no. and refined into Hellfire Scoria at the Blacksmith. Mm -hmm. Hellfire Scoria upgrades the Heliquary, a repository of demonic power you add to by defeating demons and provides you passive buffs. Legendary gem fragments, which combine into legendary gems found in rifts when crests are used and also sometimes on the battle pass. Enigmatic Crystals upgrades your secondary slot items found in challenge rifts and bought from the materials vendor. Write this scrap down, guys. Pieces. Monster Essence yep, upgrades the Haradrim. Altar dropped by monsters in the overworld randomly. Write this down. Fading embers earned from rifts and used to buy basic gems at the merchants. I forgot and about those. Echo crystals bought from the crystal merchant for 500 platinum and used to upgrade runes beyond level five. Wait, isn't so, platinum just for money? currencies and upgrade materials. Most of them linked directly to the progression of the battle pass, which itself requires battle points, which are farmed most efficiently by completing rifts. So now we can go back and look at legendary crests. And okay. this is where it gets both psychologically and mathematically abusive. And Le also, like, he um, he, he made a, a, an addendum to this, or, like, a correction to this, is that he actually forgot a currency. Because there are legendary crests, and then there are also eternal legendary crests. And eternal legendary crests are only buyable on the store. And the difference is that eternal legendary crests, you can, uh, the gems that you get out of those, you can sell on the auction house. But for the regular losers that can only afford to get one a, one a month, uh, they can't sell their gems. Legendary crests are sold in the shop for orbs. Orbs are bought That's in right. specific pack sizes. That's right. A legendary crest costs 160 orbs. Yes. The shop sells orbs in packs of 60 or 315. There are higher, ah. but let's look at these for now. 60 is too few, and 315 is only five orbs shy of 320, which is how many we need to afford to two. two legendary crests. This is by design. When a of player course. opens the shop and they've already... Yeah, they want to get you to the point where you're edging. They want you to be edging, so you just, you buy it again. You're like, oh, I'll just, I just buy it again. It's, uh, it's just four bucks. It's four bucks. I'll buy, I'll buy it again. Committed to buying something. The game doesn't want you to consider how much you're buying, but how much you need for the next efficient purchase. Because I Because that's always going to be a much lower number. So a player won't think... I'm buying 315 orbs, yeah. they'll think, I'm only five orbs short of right. two crests. Yep. So they'll look into the larger 899 pack, which has 630 orbs. That may seem like a random number to add, but it's remarkably specific, because four legendary crests at 160 orbs each costs 640 orbs, meaning even with that pack, you're now 10 short. But that's only 10. But you may as well buy might, the bigger pack, yeah, which only well costs 22 one. pounds and gets you 1,650 orbs. A player isn't thinking, just I keep just bought 1,650. They're thinking, 
I only need five, and then I only need ten. And once you've bought the 1650, yeah, wouldn't you know it? There's actually a button on the legendary crest screen to buy ten crests for 1,600 orbs. Mm -hmm. Super convenient. It's almost like everything is designed to flow into buying that £22 orb pack and then spending right. that on ten legendary crests. Well, you should buy that one because it's you get 10% extra too. You've got to keep that in mind. So now you have 10 crests because you've been able to justify only needing 5, then mm -hmm. only needing 10. This is abusive pricing. Now, adding a crest to a rift increases the drops a little, and adding a legendary guarantees a decent drop. The shop even explains, adding a legendary is guaranteed to reward a legendary gem that can be sold on the market. Now, you need platinum for the market, but don't worry about that right now. You've got 10 yeah, crests. Yeah, don't worry you about that. You start a rift and you see three crest slots. This means you'll be able to run three rifts on maxed yeah. crests and have one left over, right? That's well, right. no, because no. if you do put three legendary crests into those slots, a new option appears, an option you will never find until you do this. It asks, hey, want to add, an add another seven? You're adding seven more. It's not like, oh, we're just going to go one more, go four, five, six. No, it's one, two, three, ten. Another seven yeah, why for wouldn't? the maxed enhanced Elder Rift experience. There is no way to even find out that you can add 10 legendary crests in game until you add yep. the first three. And isn't it convenient that 10 crests can be added in a single run? That's a and lot. the orb pack size that's most convenient psychologically ten. was designed to make you buy 10 crests. But what actually happens if you add 10 crests to a run? Callum, uh well, I've seen what happens many times. Nothing and myself spent two days playing this game as free mm -hmm. players, seeing how far we could progress without spending any money. And at around level 35, the experience required to level up increases sharply. In it the does. first day, I went from level 1 to 40. And in a second day of nothing but endless grinding, I went from 40 to 49. During a Ugh. stream, after two hours of Elder Rift runs, averaging about five minutes per run and only seeing a few rare items, Diligent a viewer farming. donated Callum £20 on the agreement Callum would spend it on 10 legendary crests Hell yeah. and use them Hell just to yeah. see the loot difference. Hit that viewer was Bobby. He's trying to just get somebody else hooked. You know, Callum's maybe spent $1,500 since then. Yeah, it's a Blizzard operative. Hey, hey, here you go. Hey, 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 hey. The first one's free. First one's on me, man. Hey, I'm your friend. Here's a compilation of boss drops without using any crests. Oh, this God. is the average experience a free player will have when they finish a rift. Dude, my video about this is like a million views. This is the free to play player experience, okay? That's it. Oh, we got a bow. Wow. All right. How about that? Yep, that's it. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a big one. And here's what a boss kill looks like when you have 10 Hell legendary yeah. quests active. Big money. All right, nothing legendary yet, but um, what the fuck? How many roots? Two legendaries. Three. What the f four? <laughs> so what? Oh and and you can sell them too. The average free player will be able to earn ten crests in about five to six months yep. worth of casual play, buying one a month from mm -hmm. the hilt merchant and earning one from the free battle pass layer. God. So what you have just seen using 10 legendary crests on a single mm -hmm. run is essentially six months worth of free player legendary crest loot potential. Six months? More like six minutes because they were going slow. Condensed into a single chest. Wow. Diablo is known for dopamine spiking loot fountains like that. Killing a boss and watching loot explode is quintessential Diablo design. Oh, yeah. And that exact experience the best part in Diablo Immortal 
will cost you £20 a time. That yeah, rift took us five minutes to complete, meaning you can complete about 12 rifts an hour. If right. you 10 crest every rift at £20 each, you are spending £240 an hour. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if you want to play and you want to be efficient, the thing is, like, if you're doing it and the other people in your party aren't doing it, they're leeching off of you. So they should feel socially obligated to also be tin cresting as well. <laughs> you don't want to have any no cresters in your group dragging everybody down because they're selfish and stingy and poor, you know? Even if you were mad enough to do that, you are not guaranteed the drop you actually want. As this streamer discovered, spending $5,000 and not More like ending 16. up with a level 5 legendary gem. Quick update on that, as writing the script and editing these videos takes a few days and that news story has since changed. That streamer has now spent $10,000 and still has no five-star legendary gem. Wait, guys, another update. Um, we're up to $18,000 and still no legendary gems. What a surprise. But it gets even more insidious because there are laws requiring loot boxes in games to show the odds of any item received mm -hmm. in that loot box. What rifts are is essentially just loot boxes with some gameplay before the loot. Yeah. But that timer means that technically completing a rift does require a base level of skill. And this skill requirement means it's not gambling per se. And because- I love how like they tried to pull that shit and Belgium and Netherlands were like, yeah, we know what you're doing. No, you can't sell it here. But, but it's not a loot box. You have to. No, it is. You know it. We know it. Everybody knows it. No, it's not happening. Yeah, it, it's. That's how. That's how it's supposed to work. Because of this very important distinction, Diablo Immortal does not have to list the drop percent chance of any individual item from a boss. Luckily, drop. we if have. If you them. could just put the legendary crests into a box, they would have to tell you. But if you put the crests into a rift attempt, play the rift, yeah. and then get the box. That single step of intermediate gameplay means they can avoid the loot box label. But and that's the difference between a government that doesn't care and a government that does. Is that Belgium and the Netherlands just said, fuck you, we know what you're doing, you can't sell it. That's it. Everybody fucking knew what you're doing. Like, no, it doesn't matter. Like, oh, but your rules say, yeah, well, you're different. That's all there is to it. We are just trying to get around the rules. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and over here and other places, the government just doesn't care. They don't care about the people. They care about their job. If you job. fail a rift while the crests are active, those crests are returned to you. You don't lose them, meaning yeah. one crest will always ultimately open the effective loot box of a boss kill. Yes. Now, it might seem a little bit strange to be able to put one, two, three, or ten crests in. It seems quite normal the to jump, me. But the ten pull is a common trope in gacha games. What? Being able to draw one or draw ten from what? a random gacha chance game is a classic design choice. I didn't choice. know this. It can actually help to think of Diablo Immortal as a gacha game. They've just replaced the animation of the opening of the box with five minutes worth of gameplay to really enhance the tension gameplay. of that drop. Legendary crests are effectively keys to loot boxes. The yes, rift itself are. is the process of getting to the loot box, and this process means it doesn't have to show you the drop rates. But we're not even close to the final level of monetization, and it's hidden in the awful Here we fine go. print. Finishing a rift gets you battle points, and these unlock the battle pass system. Of this course. is a linear track with rewards unlocked as you advance through it. There are two layers to this track advancing simultaneously, the free and the empowered. Both run at the same time, so whenever you unlock a free reward, you're reminded of what's waiting for you if you were empowered unlocking well, exactly yeah because like they want to have it like right there next to you so it's like hey man i know you did really well but you are kind of a loser because you're only spending this much imagine only one pulling you know imagine only doing one pull at a time that's just loser behavior empowered track costs $4.99 and comes with some cosmetics or you can go for the collector's empowered uh -huh. unlock and get not only cosmetics but instantly boost 10 ranks ahead of where you are now the developers have repeatedly said you collectors. cannot buy power or items in Diablo I feel like you have like words like collectors like 
isn't that just farming people that have like OCD and shit? I don't know. Am I the only person that's like, what do you mean collectors? The game just came out. It's a collector's edition battle pass. Yeah, you're farming OCD Andes. Oh my god. Mortal directly. Farming the disabled. This is because yep, you have to buy it orbs is. and then use the orbs to buy crests and then Holy run rifts fuck, with the man. crests to get the drops. There are steps between money and item. Mm -hmm. And this is how they justify it. However, buying the Empowered Collector's Battle Pass costs £13 yeah. and boosts you 10 ranks along. Now, the rank really? 10 reward is a legendary offhand weapon. Oh, so how is wow. this not paying for equipment? Well, because the legendary offhand weapon is the free track reward. You can pay to boost to get it instantly, but they will argue that's not what you're paying for. Oh, so it's for free, but if you pay, you get it immediately. Oh, that's so cute. Now I know why this took four years to put together. That's the free player reward too. But you That's still have so to play cute. the game to gain the battle wow. orbs from rifts and dungeons to level up the battle pass, right? You well, don't no. have to play the game. If you click rank up, you can just spend orbs to instantly boost your battle pass to maximum. Unlo That's literally the first thing that I did. I remember the first thing that I did is I just took that slider all the way to the right. I fucking boosted my battle pass all the way to max, and I had the full set of armor. I looked awesome at the very beginning. And then some guy was like, oh, there's a whale. Oh, there's a whale. You know what that guy's doing right now? He's getting farmed by Mega Shields and Rich Campbell in fucking Battlegrounds. He's writing another fucking Reddit post about how Quinn should stop playing the game. He's already banned in my chat. Locking all the rewards instantly. I've managed to grind to quit. Battle Pass rank 13 for free with 27 ranks left to go. Mm. Boosting to maximum would cost me 4,050 orbs, meaning it's I'd still much. need to spend over 65 pounds on orbs to skip the grind. Well, the, the smart thing to do is you just buy, the smartest thing to do is you always just buy them $100 at a time. Because that way you get the most value for your money. See, you get 120% value versus 100% value. But the problem is that 120 and 100, 100%, both of them multiplied by zero is still zero. It's not worth shit. And remember, all of this is Battle Pass Season 1. So if you aren't able to finish the Battle Pass legitimately before mm -hmm. Season 2 releases, you might be tempted to pay real money yeah. to boost to get the final rewards. Yeah, and when the second well. season comes out, get ready to unlock and pay and buy to for skip those. again. Yeah. But the Battle Pass isn't the only paid-for progression system. There is a worse one. This is the boon of plenty. This advertises mm. itself as a 30-day membership with daily login rewards and some mechanical boosts, such as more inventory slots right. and being able to access of the market course. board from anywhere. Absolutely. It costs $8.99, but what yes. I'm interested in is the way the login rewards are distributed. The Boon of Plenty says that you get these total rewards over 30 days. But right. let's read the fine print and see how it actually works. Okay. The Boon of Plenty can be purchased multiple times, stacking up to 90 days. I have 90 days on my account. I do. I'm never going to play the game again. You know what, actually? There we go. All right of daily gifts. Daily gifts can only be claimed while the Boon of Plenty is active, otherwise they will be lost. So mm -hmm. if you have a Boon of Plenty active and you log in every day for seven days, you'll get one regular crest a day for a total of seven. But if you fail to log in for those days and you only log in on the seventh day, you won't have a stack of crests waiting for you. You'll just of get course the not. one for that day. The missed days are effectively lost. So paying... So you're, you're basically paying... You, you... This is like paying for, like, BDSM. Like, it's nuts, man. Good job, Mr. Shimmer. No, guys, like, I mean, the game sucks. I don't want to play it. It's a bad game. I would play Diablo Immortal if it was a good game. I play Lost Ark. It has a lot of this bullshit in it, too. But the difference is Lost Ark is actually good. Diablo Immortal is not. It's not a good game. You take away all the monetization, and it's still a bad game. I'm never going to do PvP.
What do you think? I, I want to spend my own fucking time? I have such little self-respect. I want to get farmed out by a whale. Or I want to spend $20,000 to be one myself. That sounds like the worst thing ever. Why would I ever want to do that? It's awful. No fucking way I want to do that. And so, yeah, of course. Like, why would I spend a second of my life playing a game like that? 899 doesn't get you all of this stuff. It gets you the chance to get all of this stuff provided you keep you logging in. You pay them but to here's make where you it gets log on. Super scummy. Extra gifts can be claimed every 5 cumulative login days. Oh. Cumulative login days carry over to the next boon of plenty period. Oh. And then it gives you a list of which gifts are handed out on cumulative days. Okay. A single legendary crest at 5, 10 and 50. Keep in mind that these are not eternal legendary crests, okay? Like, don't get greedy, guys. You thought you were going to get Eternal Legendary Crest? Uh-uh, not unless you open up your fucking wallet. Not going to happen. I mean, a Legendary and a Legendary Gem at 20 and 25, and then two Legendary Crests at 30. So things aren't evenly mm -hmm. spaced. Being given two Crests on 30 cumulative login days matters. Because if you miss a login day... You effectively miss that reward and you will lose it until you buy more boons of plenty. Think of it. That's really special. Isn't that cute? Isn't that so fucking cute? It's like paying a gem to remind you to go to the gem. Yeah, exactly. Like this. If you have a Boon of Plenty active and you log in every day for 30 days, on mm -hmm. the 30th day, you'll get two Legendary Crests. But if you miss a single day in that 30-day period, when you log in and the Boon isn't active, your two Legendary Crests from the first Boon are held until you log in for one more day. It's not consecutive, it's cumulative meaning in total. So if you miss a single day in the 30-day period, you now need to buy another 30 days to make the boon active again and continue logging in to add days to the cumulative tracker. Don't think of the boon of plenty as the rewards it shows you. Think of it as you are paying for the privilege for your days to count toward cumulative rewards. Jesus you are effectively Christ. paying to be involved in a fear of missing out process. When You're... I say Diablo Immortal is not a product to be sold, it is a pro- it, It's- That is, in my opinion, the fact that you have to pay for your daily login rewards. Process to Holy be involved in this is exactly what I mean. This is why like whenever Chris Wilson said it wasn't a game, whenever I first heard that, I'm like, man, that's a bit harsh. Never mind. They sell them in sets of three, stacking up to 90 days because they know people will miss a, a day and they won't yeah. realize, hang on, I've got rewards being held back until that 90 mm -hmm. days is up. This is why they lock two legendary of crests course. on the 30th login of day. Of course. If you spend what if you miss... and then miss a single day, you're now in a position of buy another 30 day boon yeah. or lose out on a valuable reward you've been working towards. So yeah, like if you're at 27 days, you might as well buy 30 more days because that will allow you to get to the next, uh, the, the next two crests. And then at 30 days after that, let's say you're at 23 days. Well, I mean, shit, I might as well buy another one. I'm still playing the game. I might as well buy another boon because that's going to keep me. It's like they're keeping you on the carousel. Oh this my is quite God. simply one of the most abusively designed systems I've ever seen in a game. It is stunningly anti-player. It looks sort of. like you pay $8.99 to get these things when right. you're actually paying $8.99 for the opportunity to, to have your login days count toward earning these things. But we are still not done. I bet Once we're not, but wait, there's more. you have through the main story enough, you'll unlock another reward progression system. Is this a The Roger? Prodigy's Path. Ooh. Think of it like another battle pass, but it Nothing says Prodigy like paying somebody money for you to get more bonus items. Oh, wow, I'm a Prodigy. I'm so smart. I'm so smart. I like to give Blizzard fucking hundreds of dollars.
it's a, it is a 400% value, With though, the Prodigy's fair, Path yeah. system, you gain rewards every That's five true. levels. Then when you hit the max level of 60, you'll gain rewards every lot. five Paragon levels up to 85. But just as with the Battle Pass, there is a free path and then the adjacent paid yeah. path. And it costs £18 to unlock the paid Big Prodigy's money. Path reward side. But we're still not done. Oh, but there wait, there's more. final revelation. By now, you've probably seen the number $110,000 being thrown number. around. This is the figure the gaming news wants you to believe that YouTuber Bellular arrived at when he tried to work out how much it would I love how, like, Bellular just took this from this other guy, Greg, who just took this from this guy on Reddit. And now every gaming news website is repeating, yeah, it's 110000 is it? Yep, that's right, Ted, it's 110000 Absolutely. Meanwhile... Fucking, this just got masked out by some random guy on Reddit. And it's obviously not true. It's way more. Cost to max a Diablo Immortal character, despite the fact he never actually arrived at that figure mm -hmm. specifically. He was discussing how much it could potentially cost to max out a character, and the total cost of $100,000 was mentioned. As a oh my god, I never even reviewed that Kotaku article talking about how um, he's mad that other people don't like the game. Shut up and let me enjoy the game. Potential. Bayula himself even tweets that. out, we talked about a claim a Redditor made, you journos picked that up, claimed we said it, and then spread it across the internet. Whatever the final thing- It is very disappointing that so many people that write news articles are not interested in finding out what's true. It is very disappointing, is it? They're like, it, it, it's so annoying. It actually is, leveling down. all six of your legendary gems up because you can mm -hmm. only equip one of each type of gem will take a hell of a lot of reagents. Of course Remember, you need equal level gems to funnel into a single gem to level it up, meaning it that's does why get you, exponentially that's why you more expensive to do. Always but the absolute crest. worst design choice, the most anti-player design possible in this monetization mm -hmm. madness is that everything, the battle pass, your enhanced membership of it, your progress along it, uh -huh. your legendary gems, your prodigy's path, your membership it's of seasonal. that, the Heradric altar, the monstrous essence stash, your platinum for the market board, and your collected gold, the regular crests, and legendary it's crests, all seasonal. which remember cost 20 pounds a time to 10 crest a rift. In uh -huh. fact, every single thing except the abusively priced eternal orbs, all of it is per character, not per account if no way so you can't trade legendary gems to different accounts to different characters on your account i i've got to reinstall it so i can uninstall it again like i i i, I really i have to like somebody's got to stop these people what is this shit you want to have multiple characters you will be paying for all of this separately for all of them and wow. that includes cosmetics so Wait. if you spend 20 pounds to unlock a cosmetic outfit no way you only get it on the character you buy it for wow. all of this has caused players to review bomb the game and drop its wow. Metacritic score down to 0.5, making it's it Blizzard's lowest rated game of all time. Despite this, it has so far made $6 million in the first few days. I think it's probably made way more than that, to be honest with you. I think that it's $6 million is just a projection, and I think that it's way more. Because you've got to keep in mind, this is what a lot of people don't understand, is they're probably doing mathematics of scale but the real mathematics are like the 0.1 percent that are just like fucking whatever it costs you know put it on my card i'm gonna be number one i'm a winner and i'm gonna pay for it so now i've played for a few days and i've looked into the systems behind it what's the actual verdict the, the truth no. is that two seemingly contradictory things can mm -hmm. both be equally valid diablo yeah. immortal is an extremely fun game to play the comp i will as i've said before strongly disagree with that i think that diablo immortal is a shit game the content is garbage 
The progression path is on rails and trash. The amount of character customization is minimal. The PvP is pay to win. There's nothing good about the game. I'm sorry, like there's no, there's nothing good about the game. That's great. The bosses are flashy. It's I crazy. enjoyed my time playing. The battle I, system I, is great. The synergy between okay. the classes is nice. And the set and legendary items affecting your skills makes for a wide selection of viable builds. Running solo is fun. Running in a group is super enjoyable. But if I didn't stream, I probably would have played the game for two days. I would have played the game the first day. And then I would have been like, okay, I would have logged on, woken up the next day, gotten online, played it again, and then that day is probably whenever I would have quit. Why play it all? Oh, for content. I played for content on stream, right? I, I thought viewers would want to see the new game. I wanted to play it for content. I did. Content's fucking over. I'm done. I'll watch videos about the game and stuff like this. Sure. I'm not playing that piece of shit again. I am someone with a great deal of self-control when it comes to money. It is indeed fun, but it is also insidiously developed from the ground yeah. up to funnel every player action toward the cash shop. Someone said to me, just turn your brain like, off. I, I know that I, I meme on being like addicted to video games and stuff like this. Oh man, I've got to spend more money on this microtransaction. That's a joke. I don't really think like this. I, this not It's not fun for me. Like I'm just putting on a show. I don't do this off stream. I, I don't. I don't. I never do this off stream. Delete the character. I, I don't want somebody to take my name. I, I don't want to delete the character because like if if they add new content that I want to look at like in six months or something, I don't. I want to have a sixty. Like I'm if there's like a new. And PvP while I understand the sentiment of enjoy the flashing lights and loud noises, yeah. I am someone who enjoys engaging their brain and solving the puzzle of the game, the puzzle of min maxing, mm -hmm. the puzzle of build variety and team composition. Like years, I enjoy yeah. having to engage my brain to beat a game. But if you do that with Diablo Immortal, you will ask yourself lots of questions, and the answer to every question is money. The credit card. Uh, and if you're still uh, thinking, "Oh, I've been is. having fun," great. So have I. Your fun is not invalid. No one wants you to stop having fun. We want the game industry to treat you better. We want the game industry to put a little more focus in... I love how, like, yeah, that, that this is actually a much better... Because, like, for me, I'd be an asshole. And I would be like, yeah, I don't want you to have fun because your idea of fun is being a fucking loser who can't win on their own. You know, I would be an asshole. But honestly, Josh is way more diplomatic than I am. He's way more different because he's right, though. He's completely fucking right. We do want to, yeah, just have the games treat players like real players, and that's it. Not treat them like fucking garbage, man. It's awful. Now, I don't think that sounds better when he says it. I know! It's way better. There's not a million hate threads about him. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I'm not nice about this at all. Holy shit. To making the game fun and a little less into making it predatory. I feel it's our responsibility as YouTubers yeah. to hold these companies to account and maybe focus on making the game fun. I disagree with that. I don't think we can hold them to account. And that's why we're gonna talk to fucking politicians and we're gonna get legislation passed one way or another, or at least we're gonna fucking try to get the shit out of games. Because it is gambling, it is marketed towards kids, it is deceptive, it is manipulative, and it is bad. And you know what? If you get taken advantage of, I don't feel sorry for you for a second. But the only thing that I, I, I detest more than people with low fucking uh, low self-control are people, these little parasites that prey on it. Now, I don't really respect people that don't have self-control to not buy microtransactions. I think they're fucking stupid. But the only things that I don't like more than them are the people that are making money off of it. I've had enough of it. Uh, politicians get paid to stay quiet about it, same as gun policy. Yeah, that's probably true, but we'll fucking try. Yeah, we'll fucking try. It doesn't mean we can't try, right? Not spending time working out how you can get around the definition of loot box. And if you think mm -hmm. Diablo isn't gambling, remember it's already been banned in Belgium and the Netherlands for Why? falling foul of the EU gambling laws. Yeah, it's sure but right. has Diablo Immortal lived up to the expectations that Blizzard have set for themselves? On Blizzard's website, no. on the About section, you can find eight What We Stand For sections. The two that I think stand out the most 
are gameplay first and lead responsibly. In the gameplay first section, it says, it is our job to make our games as fun as possible for as many people as we can reach. I do not believe Diablo Immortal is designed to be as fun as possible. I think that's not true. I think that it's supposed to be as fun as possible, but it's supposed to cut you off from the fun at the very second that they can get you to spend money. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it is. Like, because oh, the, a lot of these free-to-play games, they forgot the most important thing. If you want people to spend money on your game, it has to be a good game. That's why people make excuses for, oh, WoW's not pay to win? Oh, no, it's not pay to win? What do you mean you could buy a WoW token and then buy gold and then buy gear and use it in PvP to increase your rating? Well, that's not really pay to win because what if you lose the game? You know? Like, yeah, they're gonna, oh, what do you mean Lost Ark's not pay to win? Well, yeah, you could buy gold, you could buy honing stones, you could hone your gear to make your gear better, but you can still fall off the edge on Vault, and so it's not really pay to win, is it, right? I mean, you can still lose. If it's pay to win, but you can lose, it's not pay to win, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, right, and they're making excuses for it because they like WoW or they like Lost Ark. But it's fucking pay to win. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. I believe it's been designed to be as fun as it needs to be to keep people playing and then monetized. That's the next self-imposed right. standard is lead responsibly, which at the bottom says, we are committed to making ethical decisions, Off always keeping our players in mind Financial and setting point. a strong example of professionalism and excellence at all times. That is true. I mean, I think that they have set a completely new standard for monetization with Diablo Immortal, and I can't wait to see what innovations they come up with next. Maybe what they can do is they can take a picture. They can have like an identifier that um, like it will identify if you somehow get your dick on camera and it will take a snapshot of it and you'll have to pay 3,500 eternal orbs for them to remove the snapshot from the Blizzard database of your dick. And if you don't do that, they post it to your Twitter account. Yeah, I mean, you never know, guys. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless. I cannot believe that decisions were made in Diablo Immortal with the players in mind. I believe they were made with the payers in mind. Oh, of course. Paul Tassi of Forbes writes, Diablo Immortal is 10 times worse than Genshin Impact. In the article, he says, even compared to other mobile titles, Diablo Immortal is going above and beyond with its microtransactions in a way that's far, far worse than most other games in this genre. Diablo Immortal is quite... Yeah, but did he say to play it or not? Did he say that it was a good game? Because, like, as I said, what I really want to fight against here is the idea that it's a good game. It is literal trash. It is literal, regurgitated, fucking human centipede, two girls, one cup, fucking regurgitated garbage that we have seen... 10 years ago, and I'm sick of it. One man, Simply one an jar. excellent gameplay yeah. experience destroyed by being completely infested with predatory systems designed to make you spend more money than is acceptable. It is the rotten corpse of Diablo covered in good-looking clothes. About it right. deserves to make money, but not like this. It deserves praise for the good parts, but you cannot ignore its anti-player design. So I do actually agree with Diablo Immortal's opening cutscene. We as players do need to stand together against the rising evil. It's not going to happen. That rising evil, Diablo, is you. you. Thank you very much for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep Ain't the channel alive. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video Ain't description for links to the fact. Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and our Discord. True and as always, and real. have a great day. Holy fuck, man. Like, what a video. I was expecting this to be good. And it was good. Holy shit, man. Let me, let me link this for you guys uh, so everybody can give it some support. Josh has made great videos for a long time. I've watched them for a little bit less than that, and I think that they're fucking great. Uh, they are amazing. Watch the amendum. I already did. I watched it the day that it came out. I just didn't watch the whole video then. Yeah, I already saw part two, guys. There's the video. Please watch it. Please give it a like. Please give them some support, man. Uh, this video is absolutely necessary. Like, I will... <laughs> 
The thing is, like, I was thinking about playing all the way through Diablo Immortal, but I don't want to because I don't like it. Yeah, I don't really like it that much. Yeah, that that's about it. Um, I, I think that obviously it would be a... Um, it, it, yeah, we get it. Yeah, you guys get it. You pretty much get the idea of it. Might do an all craft this week about Diablo Immortal. Maybe bring on some of the guys and figure it out. A uh, recent update. Yeah, I saw that already. Really wish predatory games didn't make so much money. Well, they wouldn't be predatory if they didn't make a lot of money. What kind of a predator doesn't fucking get its prey? Well, it's not really a predator in that case, is it? Of course fucking not, man. Uh, Rich likes it. Yeah, I think there's a, saying this game is the worst monetization is stupid. It's pretty bad, man. Watch the Stu's video about last video about Lost Ark. I will watch it at some point. Uh, I, I will. Stu's video. Yeah, I'll get to that. You old saying, the moment that you find the game unenjoyable, just quit. Yeah, exactly. What, what's the utility in labeling games pay to win whenever it catches literally every game with, with, with trading? Because it's outside of the, of the scope of the TOS. I think that if the scope of the TOS does not allow something, it doesn't really count in my mind. Here's the way that I see it, is I look at a game like Diablo Immortal, and it is fundamentally built completely around, uh, around these systems. That's all it is, is it's just these systems. There's nothing else besides that. It's just one way, it's like basically, um, it's like you're going to a carnival, and each carnival takes money. That's it. Uh, you should really cover BDO. It's the only game that really shits, uh, shits your money out and breaks your gear if you fuck it up. You think that's more toxic than any other shit? Uh, I know about BDO, I played it many times. Uh, I've, I've, uh, one time I hit two phones together and I said that, you know, there's a 50% chance it'll turn into a Samsung S8 or it's a 50% chance they'll both break. Uh, I think that's what I did the first time. And uh, it's just annoying, man. It's a Ponzi scheme designed as a game. It's not really a Ponzi scheme. It's just a manipulative shit game. Like, that's all there is to it. It's a manipulative shit game that Blizzard has unfortunately attached the IP of one of their only like like games that people have any degree of nostalgia for behind it man it's literal fucking trash it's disappointing and that's all there is to it really like i think it fucking sucks i was hoping diablo immortal would be better i was hoping that like i was hoping that it would be like lost ark where lost ark is pay to win trash but at least it's fun at least it's a good game 